Hello and welcome to this video about Greek letters we use in mathematics. But first I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Now in natural science and mathematics, some Greek letters are often used because they nicely extend the symbol set of the Latin alphabet. Indeed, the pronunciation of the letters differ a lot, therefore the most important part of this video is that I can show you how to write the letters. So then let's immediately start with the first one, alpha or alpha. The lowercase letter is often used and written like this. The uppercase letter looks like an A, therefore we don't use it as a symbol. In the case you use latest, you generate the lowercase one by backslash alpha and the uppercase one simply by A. And then you see the output looks like this. Okay, then let's go to the next one, which is beta. There we also only use the lowercase one, which looks like this. Because capital beta again looks like B. Also here in latest backslash beta gives us this nice output here. Okay, then the third one is gamma. Where the lowercase letter looks like this and the capital one is this. Now for latest we have two commands, one with the lowercase g and one with the capital G. And as before you see we get this nice output here. Then the next on the list is delta. Indeed this is what you often see in mathematics, this is the lowercase one and this is the capital one. And now you might already guess the corresponding latest commands with lowercase d and capital D. And as before we get a very nice output here. Now immediately after delta we find epsilon in the list. And there we only use the lowercase one which looks like this because the capital one is just an E. Indeed in latish you find two variants for the lowercase letter you can use. However as you can see most of the time we would prefer the second one here. Okay then next we have zeta. There we only use the lowercase one which I draw like this. And as you might already guess, the capital one is just a Z. Okay, then the command backslash zeta gives us this very nice symbol here. The next letter on the list is eta, where the lowercase one looks like this. And the capital one is just an H. And as before, this is how it works in latish. Now the next one I find very interesting and it's theta. The lowercase letter you either do in this way or in this way. And the capital one looks like the first lowercase one but thicker. And indeed both possibilities for the lowercase letter you find in latish as well. Now the next one is not often used and it's called iota. Indeed the lowercase one looks like an i but without the dot. And the capital one we don't use at all because it's simply capital I. Sometimes the letter is used, but then you see it's hard to distinguish from a normal I. The next one is also hard to distinguish from a Latin letter and it's called Kappa. It almost looks like a lowercase k. Indeed the capital one is a capital K. However, since you can make it a little bit more curved than a normal K, we often use it. But that's definitely something you should practice in writing. Okay, now we reached one popular one called lambda. There we use the lowercase one as well as the capital one. Therefore again we have two commands we use in latish. Now we continue to another important letter called mu. There we have this nice lowercase version but the capital one is just m. Here the command is nice and short, just backslash mu and we get this nice letter here. Okay, this was the first half of the Greek alphabet, the next 12 letters will follow now. The next one corresponds to n and it's called nu. It's very important and you should not write it like a v. Maybe a curved version like this would be appropriate. And the capital one we don't use because it's just capital N. Indeed, you often see this nu in physics for frequencies. Okay, then the next one I call xi but often it's also pronounced xi. 
the lowercase letter is written like this. This is something one has to practice at the beginning. And the capital letter is a little bit funny because it looks like three horizontal lines. Now, as before, these two commands produce these two nice letters. The next letter in the list is one we don't use in mathematics at all. It's the Omicron or Omicron. We don't use it because it looks like a lowercase o or a capital O. Therefore, by default, the Omicron has no special LaTeX commands. However, now the next letter on the list is a very famous one. It's pi. And indeed, in mathematics, we use the lowercase version as well as the uppercase version. Most of the time, you see the capital pi for the product sign. Now, using backslash pi generates these two important symbols. Okay, then let's continue to the next letter, which we often use in physics. It's called rho, and only the lowercase version is used. Because the capital letter is just p. In fact, in LaTeX, you have two different commands to generate a lowercase rho. Now, the next letter on the list is the famous sigma. For this, the lowercase one as well as the capital one are used very often. And indeed, in mathematics, we use the capital sigma for the sun sign. However, you can also use it as a letter, as a variable, using the backslash sigma command. Now, after S comes T, so in the Greek alphabet we find tau. And there, only the lowercase version is used. You see, you write it in a different way than a normal lowercase t. And in LaTeX, you would use backslash tau to get it. Okay, now the next letter on the list could be used, but I see it rarely. And moreover, you find a lot of pronunciations for epsilon. For example, you also find it as upsilon. Personally, I wouldn't use the lowercase version because for me, it looks like a lowercase v. However, if you don't throw the capital one as a Y, you can use it. Indeed, by default, both letters are in LaTeX and you can see the capital one is very unique. Okay, let's close the list with the last four letters, which are all used frequently. Let's start with the letter Phi. For this, you often see the lowercase version and also the capital one. However, there's also another version for the lowercase one, which looks similarly to the capital one. Therefore, here I think it's very important that you can distinguish the corresponding commands if you use them. So there should be no danger of confusion between the lowercase and the capital letter. Okay, then the next letter on the list is chi. It's not hard to draw and we also only use the lowercase version because the capital one looks like a capital X. And not so surprising, we can use the command backslash chi to produce this x-like symbol. Okay, now the 23rd letter in the alphabet is the famous psi. The lowercase and the uppercase look similarly, therefore it's important that you draw them differently. However, of course with LaTeX you don't have a problem at all, you can distinguish them immediately. Okay, and with this we have reached the last letter in the list, which is omega. The lowercase version should not look like a W and the uppercase version is something like this. In fact, both symbols we use frequently in mathematics. Therefore, you can immediately generate them with these commands. So, we've reached the end of the list and now you know all the Greek letters and the corresponding symbols we use in mathematics. Therefore, I hope this was helpful and that I see you in the next video. Bye!